everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is for those of you who've been requesting a handbag collection for quite a while now. I haven't done one in about two years. It is fun to sit down and reflect on my handbag collection journey. There's a lot more to my life than what you are seeing in this video. This is just an interest of mine. It used to captivate me a lot more. I'm kind of out of the loop nowadays as to what sort of bags are cool, but I used to be just a voracious reader about luxury handbags. So this collection reflects that combined with my pretty classic taste and you'll see that in my purchasing journey. Most of these bags are pretty classic with a twist, a little bit of vintage, but I do also love color. So you'll see that as well. The focus of it isn't to be a review video. So if you'd like to see a video, for example, on my favorite why sell bags and my thoughts on each of the different styles that they offer or the same for Chanel, those are the two dominant designers that I've kind of built my collection around then that will be a separate video but for this one we're gonna focus on the chronology of how I've built up my collection the reason that I'm filming it that way is that that is what you requested and what you said would be most interesting to you so let's start at the beginning and I will show you the very first designer handbag that I purchased I was interning at a law firm in Hong Kong and the money that I had saved from that internship went to purchasing this bag. At the time, Louis Vuitton monogram was all the rage. A lot of people were coveting the Speedy, but I preferred something I could wear on my shoulder, and so I got this bag. It's definitely aged to a beautiful cognac color, and I was really happy with the Louis Vuitton customer service I received because one of the screws came loose shortly after purchasing it and I got on the spot fantastic customer service. This is the Louis Vuitton Galliera bag. It also exists in Damier as well. I believe it's discontinued now, but I absolutely love it. I love that it has little feet as well. Not that I would ever think to put my bag on the ground, but I do find that it really protects um, the quality of the bag. I have not babied this bag it is not in perfect condition anymore but I think what's unique to Louis Vuitton is that their handbags in my opinion get more beautiful as they age and soften and darken and that is what I love about it so that was my very first splurge and before that I was all about Michael Kors, Kate Spade, um, Rebecca Minkoff those were the kinds of bags that I was buying and then I entered the luxury market with this bag fortunately or unfortunately just became all about it it became a real passion of mine where I would save for bags every year and I have no regrets about it whatsoever so the second bag that I purchased um, when I got a new job was this Chanel gorgeous GST which is now also discontinued this bag is so substantial I think it's probably actually Hold that, it's definitely the heaviest bag that I own. It has a lot of hardware and the caviar leather and just the amount of caviar leather because it does have a divider in the middle uh, makes it super heavy, but it is a beautiful bag and you can see it is in absolutely immaculate condition. There is no corner wear and it's still very, very structured. I've seen ones um, listed on resale that have kind of lost their shape, but I keep mine stuffed. Um, so it's kept its shape really, really well. Um, I've actually considered selling it throughout the years because I don't use it all that much, but I still hang on to it. It feels like a classic piece to me, so I've held on to it and pull it out once in a while and just marvel at how gorgeous it is. The second purchase I made, having bought such a large Chanel handbag, I had an event to go to and I bought this little Chanel wallet on chain. I actually purchased this before I ever got a flap and then the price just skyrocketed on this. I know Chanel does a ton of price increases on everything, but the price point on this has drastically changed since I purchased it. I'm really happy that I have one. I wouldn't say that I've ever had a hankering, a serious hankering to buy a second though, um, because I feel like the one I got is so classic with the gold and caviar leather and like the GST, um, despite using it a lot more than I have the GST, it's in pretty perfect condition. It squishes down a bit, no corner wear, no scuffing, and that really is what Caviar leather is famed for. I do pull this out quite a bit. It's kind of my go-to evening bag um, or travel bag as well. You know, when you're traveling, you just don't tend to need as many things. So it works really well for that too and packs, you know, very, very well too. So my first 
more whimsical purchase, I would say, and it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. This was purchased from a reseller, um, but it was in perfect condition when I purchased it. It is still in pretty per perfect condition, and I think it's a testament that even though, yes, caviar is pretty indestructible, you shouldn't be too afraid of lambskin either if you're gentle with your bags and you don't have super long, scratchy nails, um, because there's not a scratch to be seen on this bag, nor is there a lot of corner wear or anything like that either, or, you know, loss of shape. It is a single flap, so this dates back to when Chanel was doing single flaps only, so you can fit a little bit more in it, um, which is something that you'll see I'm drawn to. And so I've often chosen to purchase Chanel pre-love bags because the whole period of time that I've been buying Chanel has been the double flap era um, and you can fit more if it's a single flap so I absolutely love the emerald it's not a Kelly green exactly because it has a touch more blue it has faded just a tiny tiny bit and I dread it fading more because I just think once you recolor bags they never look quite the same so I am inclined to just kind of keep wearing it as a green, you know, gently fades a bit more and more, but I will never get rid of this bag. It is my absolute just pride and joy and it always makes me happy. Wouldn't think that green is something that you get a ton of wear out of with a bag, but here's my controversial opinion. I actually think you get more wear out of green than you do blue for bags. And the reason is that you can wear it with any color shoe you know, any color of neutral shoe and it works. And if you have pretty classic girly style like I do, you probably like a lot of floral prints or earthy prints and it looks great with either of those. So by then, of course, I was in just a full on Chanel Kool-Aid love affair moment and I bought two more Chanel bags. And keep in mind, this is over a long period of time, right? 2012 to 2020, eight years um, worth of shopping, but I still did a lot of shopping in that time period. I bought this bag, which is a beautiful Chanel Navy Boy. I did have some issues with it initially. If you guys have seen my video on that, my Chanel horror story, you'll know I had a big issue with the strap. For all that drama and crazy and horrible customer service, they did do a good job fixing it because I've never had a problem with it again and you cannot tell that it's been fixed. This is still, I don't know if it's related to that experience or just the combination of the rather opulent um, brushed gold hardware and the navy, which is kind of, you know, it's a bold kind of navy color. Um, it's my least worn handbag of my entire collection. And maybe too, I wanted to baby it a little bit. So it's in pristine, pretty much unworn condition, which doesn't mean that I don't wear it. It just means I don't grab it and carry it for long periods of time. So a bag that I have worn to death is this bag. I actually purchased it from YouTuber Mel Soldera. And to this day, I still absolutely love love, love, love this bag. And I don't change my collection a lot. That's kind of what is different about me, I guess. Um, I tend to hold on to my handbags. I've only ever sold like two bags ever, I think, um, in my life. So I tend to keep what I buy. This bag um, is vintage from the 90s. It's a single vertical flap in caviar leather. And they are quite hard to find now because the extra large hardware has become pretty coveted. I noticed that there was starting to be some wear to the gold hardware, so I sent it off to Leather Surgeon in order to be reconditioned. The reconditioning on the leather, mainly on the corners, which had significant scuffing, um, came out great and lasted. The only thing I would say to be mindful of is that the hardware actually is 24 karat gold plated. And when I had it replated by Leather Surgeons, somehow it hasn't lasted on this middle part of the double CCs. Um, now it has been many years, so it's not surprising. And this is why you guys know I'm a jewelry designer. This is why I don't like stuff that's plated because plating is essentially all about charged um, particles and that bond weakens over time and i've noticed that here where your fingers touch a lot 
unfortunately it's kind of worn down a bit but that aside um, this handbag is perfection I love how much you can fit in it because it has no dividers whatsoever it's a single flap it just fits a ton and there's something about this bag I'm just obsessed with it every time I go and think about buying you know a modern double flap jumbo because this is a jumbo size or the vintage version of the jumbo size I feel that that bag is very um, boxy and chunky against my body compared to this one, which is much more narrow, so it doesn't stick out for me as much. Right or wrong, that has been my subjective opinion, or at least was when I bought this handbag and got just insane wear out of it. I used to wear this bag like every single day for a long, long time. So after buying those bags, I think I had gotten my fill of Chanel for a little while and I wanted to experience something different. Um, I remember I went to England for the summer and I picked up this Bayswater and um, I really loved it. I think the color is really gorgeous. It's probably the least, one of the least expensive bags in this collection because I bought it at the outlet, at the Mulberry outlet. Um, I think the color was called Graphite and I have not kept it well stuffed so it has lost its shape but that's something that's extremely common with um, Mulberry Bayswater bags. Um, wear and age has looked a lot better on this bag than it has on the lily which I received as a Christmas gift. This one and then the Gucci one I'm about to show you are the only two bags that I have not purchased with my own money that were gifts from family. Um, so this Mulberry Lily is really pretty. I like how earthy it is and that it still has a bit of dressy um, hardware. It's a beautiful cognac color. I'm a little bit disappointed by how scratched the hardware is and how much the bag has softened despite actually keeping it stuffed. So I have tissue paper um, throughout the inside of this and it just is very, very slouchy. Um, and that happened quickly. This is the Celine Mini. Um, remember, it's like the Phantom, then the Mini, then the Micro, then the Nano in terms of sizing. They're kind of weirdly named. I absolutely love this color to this day. I just think it's such a gorgeous color. In terms of nail polish, it was like all the rage when I bought this handbag. Do you guys remember, you don't know Jacques or my private jet? Um, that was the time period that I bought this bag. Um, so around 2016, somewhere around there. Um, and I still love this bag. It is extremely slouchy and has lost all structure, but this was one of the most used pre-love bags that I've purchased, if you like. So it already had, you know, probably one or two years under its belt when I bought it. And I really love it. I think it's a really gorgeous bag. Um, it does fit a laptop, so it's good for that with really sturdy handles. They're kind of a good option for that. So um, it's a really nice handbag. It is heavy for having no hardware though, so you have to be okay with that as well. Um, and around the same time period, I think right after that, I bought a Phantom, which I thought was too big for my 5'4 frame, and so I sold that one on Fashion File. Then after that, I got this um, Gucci Soho as I believe a Christmas or birthday gift, I don't remember because my birthday is so close to Christmas, um, from my mom. I think it's such a beautiful bag with 70s style um, styling with the tassel, which is a little bit rumpled looking, um, but you can fix things like this with a steamer, by the way, if you're gentle. Um, I absolutely love the color of it. I love how well it's worn. It's got virtually no wear on it whatsoever for a light bag. Um, I think it's really sad that they discontinued this. I still have the Gucci Soho Disco. You don't see that bag in this collection because I left it in Hawaii. So I have a little red Gucci Soho. Somehow red in handbags isn't my thing. I don't seem to get a ton of wear out of it. So I left it in Hawaii to wear over there. Um, but this bag I've gotten a lot more wear out of. And I like the tote style. It sits really well on the shoulder as well. Really comfortable bag. Hard, slightly hard to see what's inside it. Like the Galleria, it's a little bit of a bottomless pit where you're like, you know, rummaging around for your things, but I don't mind that too much. And I've gotten a lot of wear of, out of this bag during the summer until I purchased my Louis Vuitton Azure bag, which I'll show you shortly. 
Um, it was my most used um, summer bag. And then my YSL phase started. So I bought this collage after seeing it on so many bloggers and then somehow it just disappeared and I haven't seen it on as many bloggers since then, but it had a moment and I thought it was so edgy and for my classic style that it was just so adventurous to buy it, which is actually rather humorous, um, but it was, probably like one of my top three purchases ever made in terms of like dollar per wear because I've worn this bag so much and it still looks so wonderful. It does have a bit of corner wear just through so much love and um, has gotten a little bit smushy, but I truly have worn this bag probably more than any other bag that I'm going to show you. I absolutely love the way the front um, section is larger than the back one. It's just really nice to organize your things in it. Everything fits, even an umbrella. Um, I really haven't babied this bag at all. It was kind of my everyday work bag for a really long time. And I love the top handle on it because if you carry it that way, it's like a little briefcase and I like that look um, but then the shoulder strap is also very comfortable so um, love it it will fit any size of um, phone or even a tablet in the back section since it's so large um, can't recommend this bag enough it truly is a wonderful bag this one was a big lust for me when I used to watch the hills Lauren Conrad had this bag it's the medallion bag Mine has a silver hardware medallion on it. Um, it's in caviar leather. I just so love this bag and couldn't conceive of ever having one when I watched that show. So of course, eventually had to have it, but long, long after it had been discontinued. And so I was looking online on um, resale websites and I found one on Vestier and I could not believe how well priced it was. So I think it was around 800. It's definitely more than that nowadays. Um, I think you would be hard pressed to find one at that price point, but I do think it's a great bag. It's such a great little shape. It fits a lot, but you can find your things really easily because it's kind of a triangle shape with a wide base that is well structured and then more of a narrow top. So you can just open it and kind of see everything. Um, I think if I found one in like a beige that was in good condition, I would snap it up immediately and I almost have a bit more of an appetite for that than another flap because here on the West Coast, a nice little casual tote like this is just always appropriate and easy to use. I've never been too much into limited edition collections, but I do love Hawaii. It's my home away from home and my happy vacation place. So when they did this um, collection, which had many different locations um, available, on them, I absolutely caved. Angela Sebrano got one first and then I copied her <laughs> um, because we both love Hawaii. She still has hers, but I think she does and I absolutely love mine. I never had a Neverfull before. Oh my goodness, this bag is so bad because you just want to put so much stuff in it because it does fit so much. And yet there's a tension there in that I am so wary of putting my MacBook Pro in it because I know it will just destroy the skinny handles. And so I try not to do that. I try to actually keep it pretty light. I have an organizer in it and I try not to really put a ton of stuff in it. I prefer it with the sides just open and these little ties just hanging there. I don't like the tucked in look, um, but I love this bag. I don't think I would get another Neverfull though. I think I'm really happy with this one and ultimately it's not my favorite style of bag. I just really liked that they did a Hawaii one, so I had to have it. The Montaigne, and I think it's one of Louis Vuitton's best designed handbags in terms of practicality. You know, if you work in an office, I think it's a great size. It's a true medium size, um, not medium in the sense of like a Chanel medium, but in terms of like general sizing of handbags. And I absolutely love this color. So I bought it after the color was already discontinued on resale. The color is called Iris and it is in the empreinte leather, which is so expensive if you buy it new. So I remember I didn't quite the, have the heart to spend that amount of money on a Vuitton handbag. And it has a detachable strap that you can um, carry it over your shoulder with. And when you do that, these little handles actually fully tuck in so that you don't have them poking out 
and stabbing you in the side, which I think is so clever. Um, and it's a great bag. I feel like it's very, very underrated. This color doesn't go with everything, but I am very, very drawn to it. It looks great with denim. Um, and it it's kind of like a light indigo, so you can wear it with purples and it looks really great because it has purple in it and it also looks really great with tones that are more navy and blue as well and colors like that so a green that has a bit of blue or red that has a bit of purple um, that aren't just flat primary colors are the best for handbags in my opinion so if you're fearful of color because you don't think you'll get a lot of wear out of it that is my very best tip for you halfway through but really getting into some good stuff so don't give up on me now i know this is a long video but i think it's worth it so this bag is another single flap from chanel and i absolutely love it by then i was feeling really confident about lambskin having bought the green lambskin worn it for years with no problems and it's a single flap jumbo so it fits quite a lot of stuff although not quite as much as my vertical vintage flap um, but I absolutely love chevron so this is like a sort of big sister to my green bag because it's a larger version um, in lambskin with chevron and this particular edition of it is super light um, it's not a very heavy bag thanks to the lambskin and the single flap shape of it um, so I really like that it feels really comfortable on the shoulder doesn't I don't feel like it marks my shoulder up as much either um, partly thanks to having this little leather um, strap to it as well um, and the price point was I remember really good on it too compared to the classic Chanel double flop. So from that point on is when I started really appreciating tiny handbags um, and have quite a few now. I started to just put you know the bulk of my stuff things like umbrellas and papers and binders and laptops and gym gear in like a long shot tote and then I would carry my cute tiny handbag on the side so this nano was the start of that I have always regretted not getting the sh strap shortened though because I just don't think it looks all that great cross body and I know so many people disagree with me on that one and it's not that I don't like cross body bags I do I just bought one several um, over the last year's period um, but I just don't think it's that great in this handbag so at some point you know this is my reminder to myself I feel like I need to get that strap shortened um, I love the way they do color blocking on the Celine Nanos I love how cute the little robot face is yes I'm still into that I don't care if it's basic I just love its little um, in different facial expression and I think it really comes across more with the color blocking so love that and if you don't know black and cream or like the combination of light and dark colors in fashion is one of my favorite things so I had to get that one inspired by how much I had worn my college handbag I don't know if you can see like my arm drooping a bit this is significantly heavier not because it's a heavy bag but because I have a whole bunch of stuff in it right now because this is the bag that I'm using right at this moment like I'm gonna go out for coffee with this bag after I film this video um, so this is the YSL see it's got my umbrella in it this is the YSL Lulube handbag which is very similar to the college there's no back pocket and it's got a double strap instead of a single strap and I think just a more classic rather than edgy style just a bit different styling they're both great bags I think they're some of the best value bags out there on the market to this day and also YSL has exceptional customer service so if you ever have a problem with your YSL bag I actually think they and Louis Vuitton are probably the best for that so I love this bag I fell in love with the burgundy color and I got it from Farfetch which seems to have the best selection of YSL bags outside of you know just a YSL store and after that the tiny handbag thing continued and this bag is probably the closest I've ever gotten to a true impulse buy although I did sleep on it but I saw it in the store in um, Toronto in Yorkville which is such a beautiful store and fell in love with it it is the business affinity in the smallest size it does come in a larger more practical size as well it has a nice long strap um, and I just loved the shape of it and it really brought out my inner child so this is the sort of silliest purchase I've ever made but I love the color because it's a lavender pink um, and it's so cute on I just oh 
it still makes my heart melt. But it was a silly purchase. I obviously haven't worn this as much as a lot of the other handbags that I'm showing you, but that was never the idea behind it. It was just meant to be fun and that it is. Um, I absolutely love it and I definitely would consider buying the black um, Chanel Business Affinity, but it's, I believe, no longer available in Chanel stores. I certainly haven't seen it for a while and it's always super, super snapped up um, on resale sites. So really cute bag, highly recommend this style. I think it's got a really pretty ladylike um, style to it. And ever since Chanel started having a real design focus on top handles, this is my favorite version of that because they have many different, you know, Coco top handle handbags, but this, the Business Affinity is my favorite um, design that is along those lines. All right, home run. One of my favorite bags, probably my favorite bag for summer wear is my Louis Vuitton Girolata. It is the perfect bag because it is, in my opinion, inspired by bucket bags, but it looks a lot more flattering on because it's more narrow. And so you have a lot more room to put your things east, west direction. You have a lot more room for your things rather than it being outwards poking and you have the same um, aesthetic approach as you do with um, my ears bag where you tuck in the handles and they don't poke out and you can carry it on your shoulder. It's got the ballerina pink inside as well, which I love. So I just absolutely adore this bag. Yes, um, I know some of you ask me whether the uh, canvas, the ivory on it has darkened and the answer is yes it has, but I don't think that it um, looks bad at all. It's very, very even and then the vachetta is starting to um, darken a bit, but it's still in its early stages of aging. Um, I don't know what possessed Louis Vuitton to discontinue this style. I think they should have made it with all of their different leathers because I think it's just a beautiful silhouette. It's so practical. It's really aesthetically pleasing. I adore it. And then I made two whimsical purchases. Um, this was from The Real Real. I purchased this bag when everyone was really going crazy over Chanel tweed bags but it was really the hardware that I was obsessed with. A funny thing about this limited edition style from, I think it's from 2018 and I purchased it in 2019, so it was already um, out of style for a while. The Chanel Ala Moana in Hawaii boutique actually still had one left over. So I saw it and then I looked it up and I found one on the real, real luckily. Um, I think the reason being that, you know, having plastic on a Chanel bag, there is just a little bit of tension there between that and the price point. But I will say I've been using it for quite a while now and it's, you know, indestructible. So um, it is a nice bag. I do wish they had lined the inside so that it would be leather or fabric on the inside. Um, I feel like that would have given it a bit more of a luxury feel. But for me, it was all about the hardware. And as much as, you know, it's an imperfect bag in terms of you know, practicality or classic status. It's super comfortable on your shoulder because of this woven strap, um, which is still in perfect condition. So it's a super fun bag and it does go with a lot because it just has so many fun rainbow colors going on. The weird thing is with most of my fashion choices, you know, even something like this bobbly sweater that I'm wearing, which I love by the way, but it's somehow then it's like a lot, right? Um, between the bag and the clothes if you're wearing something that's a little bit more style forward. But with lockdown, my outfit started to be so boring, just like a basic color t-shirt and Lululemon leggings to go for walks. I started carrying this bag every day just to sort of, you know, brighten my day. And I could see it was brightening other people's day too because then I would get just so many compliments on it because I think the rainbow colors of it just make people happy to see. So I do love this bag um, and it's definitely a bit more of a whimsical purchase. I bought this super expensive Chanel Stingray bag when Chanel decided to discontinue them. I absolutely love it. It is so unique. Um, the leather is so, so different from anything else I have. And it's a very unique color as well. It's a blue gray with black leather, black lambskin. This is probably my dressiest bag, even more dressy than something like a clutch in my opinion, um, just because of how opulent it is with the champagne gold hardware. It's so tiny, you can barely fit anything in it. Um, so super impractical, but I do love it. 
Y cell Cassandra. I love the hardware, the clickety hardware on this one that clicks in like this. Um, it's not super easy to get in and out of, but I do really like it. I think it's smartly made. It's a crossbody bag that I actually really enjoy wearing as a crossbody because it has a divider in the middle and because of how structured it is, it does not fit a ton, but I like how dressy it is. I think it looks really good with suit wear with the little top handle. I think it's really classy um, and I don't know, I could see this. It reminds me a lot of the styles of handbag that my grandmother had, so I feel like it's just one for the ages. It's really nicely designed um, and very dressy, so I bought its casual counterpart just to go cycling and go for walks and sort of lessen a bit of the wear on this one, which is what I was carrying daily when I purchased this one in the YSL sale. So it's a discontinued color. It's a gorgeous bronze. It's really hard to find good metallic bags, but if you do, if you do find one that you like that doesn't feel too flashy to you, it's a great purchase because it goes with everything and I think looks good with any other hardware as well. And it fits more than you would think. I think it fits actually a comparable amount to a Soho Disco, um, even though it's called the toy, so you would think it would fit nothing at all. Um, it fits more than you would think because, again, of the kind of slouchy Lulu um, leather, it just they tend to fit a lot. Um, I do think that the Lulu fits more than um, the Collège by a little bit. They're super practical handbags, I think, no matter which size you get. But I've talked about this recently. I'm gonna stop there. I hope you liked this video. Uh, let me know what your favorite handbag is right now in the comments down below. What is your favorite handbag that you own right now? And what is your most lusted after handbag? Um, I'm super curious. I actually have finally ordered some briefcases that will fit my MacBook Pro. So videos that will be coming your way are that haul video. I'm gonna do that as soon as I receive them. I've ordered two and then I also am going to film an affordable handbag video. I don't have that many, but I really love the ones that I do have, and I think it's really important to make that video almost as a counterpoint to this one because I don't think that you need to spend a lot on a handbag for it to be wonderful and for it to bring you joy. So I'm gonna share with you the ones that I have that I have kept um, that still I get a lot of use out of. So that will be the next video that you see up on my channel. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next installment on style. Bye.